أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نوية الأربعين نوية الاعتكاف نوية الخلوة نوية العزل نوية الرياضة نوية السلوك لله تعالى العظيم في هذا المسجد Every time there is Allah's mercy is so huge unlimited that is always like a fountain cannot say fountain even but it's always pouring out and if we have to think little bit we can understand that from his mercy comes everything His mercy wants out of that mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that beautiful name, Ar-Rahman, that is, is manifesting from the essence. Essence means from the, <coughs> we say in Arabic, Zatullah, the the most, the unlimited uh, reality that cannot be explained and could not be explained and never will be explained, the real reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's That <coughs> the only word we can say is essence. That Allah, Allah's essence, is explained and described through His beautiful names and attributes. So all the beautiful names and attributes are descriptions or names that are coming out from the reality of that essence. Since we say Allahu Akbar, yeah, Allah is Great, great. greater, Allah is greater, means that give an explanation that <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala essence is greater and as you cannot describe or you cannot uh, define a greatness because it's always, whatever you describe, it's all beyond that. Also, you cannot describe the essence. It's impossible because always <coughs> is in greater. The only description the essence was described is not by a human being. Because no one can describe Allah's essence except he can describe himself by himself, through himself. He can describe himself by himself, through himself. So whatever came and revealed to Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, about the description that can be understood in limits also are the descriptions that came through his beautiful names and attributes. <coughs> but these beautiful names and attributes never 
going also to be limited because Allah is greater and Allah is the encompassing name of all names and attributes means as since Allah is greater means any name or uh, any attribute that Prophet Sallallahu revealed to humanity through Allah's uh, revelation to him any attribute or name at any moment is changing from greater from great to greater or from greater to greater always is escalating and ascending so what is the definition now of Ar-Rahman is something what is the definition after a moment not our moment but Allah's moment which we don't know can change so immensely there is another word you can use drastically very good so drastically that you cannot even understand it in so such smallest moment that can be possible the moment we and we explained this before the moment that we know is 10 to minus the second that uh, scientists were able to count time the moment for them the micro moment the nano moment was 10 to minus 22 of a second that was the lowest possible fraction of a moment that they were able to to measure so let us say the 10 to minus 22 of a second which cannot make any uh, you, we cannot understand it might be only technology instruments can understand it and this is another point here why instrument can understand it and not our mind or our heart can understand it then we are limiting Allah power or Allah greatness what he gave to human being we are limiting it and we are making the instrument that human being invented greater than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created which is wrong that's why awliyaullah their knowledge is beyond scientific technology knowledge because that is created by human being scientific technology in instruments and our hearts of awliyaullah are created by Allah which is stronger there is no resemblance Allah is greater so greater on that sense also cannot be described what you think if that is for awliyaullah that their heart might be can go to 10 to minus 124 thousandths of a second it's not might be the 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 uh, the first level of wilaya of sainthood is that their hearts can go into past in the time that we consider past for them it's past present future is present or in future they can go so much in a nano seconds to 10 minus 124 thousands uh, 10 to, to 10 to the minus 100, 124 thousand of a second why because it's very simple there is 124 thousand prophets every moment every prophet Allah gave him a moment 
that to him is revealed specially. He will understand it and he can go to that moment. There is 124,000 prophet. The first one is the uh, the first one that was created first is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam through his light. The seals of Messenger is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he was from beginning and he was in the end. So in between 124,000 moment Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that can, will, is allowed to give the Ummah is 10 to minus 124,000 of a moment. Awliya Allah can go to that through their inheritance from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they can go up also in future, not only in, in past, because 10 to minus of a second to go deeply in the past in what happened. They can go forward also 10 not to minus, but plus 124,000 of a moment in the future. That moment in the future is not that mo like the moment in the past. They differ. They can go and reach these kind of knowledges. So what, what we go back to the main point is that all these names and attributes, beautiful names and attributes, are in continuous ascension. And that their ascension means in ascension of knowledges. They, they, what is the knowledge now? In a, in a moment that we have described the moments can change in a different knowledge. Rahmatullah. Allah said, Rahmatullah al Wasi'a, Allah's greatest, Allah's greatest Rahma Wasi'a, vast. There is no limitation of the meaning of vastness. Allah's Rahma is vast. What is vast means? We say this universe is vast. Huge. Means no beginning. You don't know where it's the beginning, where it's the end. It's huge, it's vast. Allah said his rahma is vast. Means everything will go in his rahma and disappear in a nano fraction of of, of a universe even. That whole universe is like a small uh, grain of sand thrown in this universe. That universe, to Awliya Allah, is like a grain of sand, of crystal white sand, thrown in this universe. Can you find it? This whole universe is like that, thrown in Allah's vast rahmah, vastness. Cannot, cannot be measured. And every beautiful and name and attribute is like that. There is no beginning of understanding of it. There is no end because in every moment it's increasing. Allah gives more. The essence from the essence is the essence is pouring more, giving more and more information, more and more information, and that's why. We know that there is 99 names, beautiful names of Allah. Allah's beautiful names are 99. But according to many scholars, not now, now and before, it's not only 99. There are the, the set that we know, there are sets of names. In that set, that we been given to us is 99. There are other sets also that scholars can, can get it out from 
reading Quran, reading Hadith, there are names, beautiful names and attributes that they are not in that set of 99. They are in different, mentioned different. That's why when we recite Ya Shafi, Shafi, Ash Shafi, the one who make, who cure everyone, is one of the beautiful names and attributes. But it is not in the 99, but it's somewhere else, in another 99. So don't limit Allah's name, beautiful names and attributes. That is a mistake. Then we are limiting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness. So as His mercy came, out of mercy comes everything. Not out of love comes, comes everything. Love also is an important factor, but the mercy is more stronger. That's why he said, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ That my mercy encompassed everything. Encompassed also love also. Because if you have mercy on someone, people they say, oh, we love our children. But you see people, they, because of the, so much mercy in their hearts, they go and adopt other children also. It's not their own children, but it is adopted children. And they love them as their children. Why? Because of mercy. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what Allah described him? Rahmah. Mercy. So he, when Allah called him Ar-Rahmah, Rahmatan lil-Alameen, mercy for humanity. That mercy, this is the biggest description that Allah, is one of the main description that Allah described Prophet. And it doesn't end. It's every moment. Allah does not, if Allah say, okay, this is my, any example, this is my rahmah, I'm giving it to you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah said, huwa al-ghani wa antum al fuqara Allah is the rich and you are the poor. When you give something, as a human being, you give something, that's it. Allah, Allah huwa al-ghani, when he gives, it's not that set. It's keep more and more. And every moment it adds on it. It adds on it. That's why description of Al Ghani to describe the word, the beautiful name at a beautiful name Al Ghani, it's impossible. Ghani. He's rich. Rich in, in, in everything. And you can like you you are uh, uh, like steak a waterfall always waterfall doesn't give water and stop then we say oh is a waterfall dried uh, get dry is that we are poor Allah described us as poor we end up with one day we don't have anything keep giving 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 if Allah doesn't give more then you end up with nothing but Allah never if he gives end up with nothing, he's ghani. Allahu al ghani. Antum al fuqara. Allahu al ghani wa antum al fuqara. Wa in tatawallahu yastabd al qawman ghayrakum thumma la yakunu amthalakum. So he is the rich. So rich in, in, every, in everything. In every moment. Always giving. Al Ati. Allah is one of his beautiful names. Al Ati, the giver. The one who gives. You cannot say Al Ati, give and stop. And he say Al Mu'ti, the one who also gives or gave. He is the one that keep giving and keep giving and keep giving. So, he, within the 99 names, beautiful names and attributes, 
since he is al ghani since he is al mu'ti or al ati since he is the uh, al rahman so all the every moment these beautiful names and attributes are moving more and more in knowledge giving to to the heart of prophet sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the essence more knowledge what prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam heard at one time he heard it a higher level at another time and that's what we can see in the hadith of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at one period he said mentioned one hadith at the second period after a while he changed the hadith the the core of the hadith is there the same hadith doesn't change but he added on it because Pro prophet is ascending so more knowledge coming so awliyaullah they take from the heart of Prophet Sallallahu as Prophet going up, ascending, they are taking more and more. And that's why don't ever, as Muslims, as a human being, we must not ever say that beautiful names and attributes are this and finish. This is what is being revealed to us to our own capacity and what we can understand but the realities of the essence ذاتُ buht buht I don't know how to explain that but uh, the reality the unique reality of the essence cannot be described only in 99 names that's why ulama in general, I'm speaking now, not only Sufi, but in general, ulama al Islam and Sufi scholar, they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be limited only to certain amount of names and attributes. Allah has infinite numbers of names and attributes that describe the essence. Means is there any other uh, 99 and we are not able to memorize them. <laughs> 99 names and we are not able to describe them. They put books and books and books and thousands and thousands of books. It's not. Not only explaining them, using them for cur curing people. To recite certain Prophet Sallallahu described many of different beautiful names and attributes to recite for solving problems and, and uh, 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 curing people. What about infinite number? Means they are beyond the language that we already we are already using. Means the Arabic language because Language for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in heavens is Arabic. The language for people is going to be the Arabic language. Means, yet we are, even the highest scholar that they go, call the Shaykh al-Islam, if they will go and bring all the ulama of this world, scholar of this world, and put them together and call them, and those who learn Arabic and learn everything, and masters and PhDs, uh, professors, put them together, combine all their Arabic together. We get the highest level possible of understanding Arabic language, isn't it? No. Uh, in the Arabic language, all of it, you cannot count more than 1,000 names of Allah beautiful name and attribute. Allah has infinite number of names and attributes coming out of the essence. Means they are beyond the language that we are still not, we are kindergarten in it. Means the Arabic language that we are studying, that we know, 
is still we are like someone in a kindergarten, even if he's Sheikh al-Islam in Arabic. Means there are words that we don't know that they can be put together, letters that can describe and give more understanding about the reality of the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why in the previous session we explained about these different states that the seeker of his, uh, the seekers or the one who is going in that journey face and be ascending in these different states and the one that important now is coming is the one that after we spoke about the one about love and the other one about fear and now the one about a raja oh. about hope what is your hope what's people's hope Is people hope <coughs> is to go and study and become a teacher or a doctor or a whatever a lawyer, carpenter, plumber, whatever it is, ling languages. This is their hope or that there is a hope other than that. There is other than that. The hope that the seekers of that journey to reach the divine presence is not to his hope is to reach his destination is not to lose to go into a puzzle what you call this puzzle one Mid, maze, uh, maze. maze to go through a maze and doesn't find his destination at the end, waste his life. Everyone hope is to reach his destination as soon as possible. Some people hopes is to be rich. Some people to be middle standard. Some people they are poor, they want to be better. Them people they are teacher, they want to get Professor, some people they are this, some people they want to marry, some people they want children, and some people they want they, <laughs> they want this or they want that. It's okay, it's hope. But there is two kinds of hope. A materialistic hope and spiritual hope. You cannot drop the spiritual hope and look only for the material hope. When we leave the spiritual hope, then why we are going into that journey? Why we are going into that long way to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When we are dropping that spiritual one, means you are not going to use reach your destination of the divine presence. You might go and reach your destination to have a nice yacht or a nice uh, house or nice RV or nice something that you like. But everyone likes that one day when he will be questioned in the grave he wants hope there that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not freeze his tongue to say Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Our hope is there. That's why awliyaullah, their hope is to catch to catch the hand of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order to follow his way and that's what we call al-ittiba' They go and discuss and explain uh, principles and uh, uh, tell you how to pray, how to fast, how to do this. Your people are, they know these basic things. They teach you about sh Sharia, which is okay, 
But before that, Prophet ﷺ, before brought Sharia to humanity, he built their manners and behaviors. He was al Amin. What is the benefit if you becoming a sheikh, you study, you got a PhD in Sharia and you go to the school? What is the benefit if you have a PhD in Sharia and you don't pray? I know, I know people. I know sheikhs, sheikh. I know sheikhs. You know sheikhs, what sheikhs? I know sheikhs, the head of shiyukh. Before they go to give a presentation, I'm sorry to say that on internet. Before they go to re, uh, give a presentation, they drink in order they go there high. Some reciters of Quran, very famous reciters around the world, they go and drink before they go recite Quran for their singing, for their recitation to become better. So what is the benefit then? So before you teach, which is necessity to teach Sharia, but teach manners. Teach people Maqam al-Iman and Maqam al-Ihsan. Show them the way of the Sufis, of these big people. What Imam Ghazali said? He said, I was, I didn't, I didn't open my mind or direct my face to this <coughs> Qawm, Al Qawm, he calls them Al Qawm. Uh, this is a word used in Arabic a lot to describe a community, a group of people. Means those Sufis. I began to study, before he became a Sufi, I began to study their knowledge. Which Ilm al Sufiya, the knowledge of Sufism. Min him from their own books. And he mentioned many names. Between them Al Junaid, Al Shibli, Abu Yazid al Bastami, Kut al Kulub, uh, the book of Kut al Kulub, Al Haris al Muhasibi, all of them. And many of them. And many of the of of the words or their associations or their lectures of their shiyukh. Until Hattatalatu ala kunhi makasidihim al ilmiya. How you see how he called it? Al ilmiya. Ala kunhi makasidihim al ilmiya. Until I observed really. Ala kunh. Kunh means the hidden essence of their scientific uh, means or, or uh, means or goals was and their the terminology. Uh -huh. the terminology their terminology I understood it because if you don't understand the terminology and you don't understand uh, maqasid means their goals their means deeply you cannot understand the Sufis it's impossible that's why people don't understand them they say they are outside this or outside that or they say something here or something there that you cannot understand so I learned that I understood it then how I was able to learn it and you hustle and I was able to extract, extract what or uh, learn whatever uh, uh, the possibility of learning from their journeys from their uh, ways or their knowledge by reading their books and listening, attending their sessions. But they don't. They don't attend you anymore. They want, don't want to listen. Imam Ghazali is saying, I learned the whole Sharia from beginning to end. I still need to know more. I went to these people to study.
He said, وَظَهَرَ لِي أَنَّ خَوَاصَهُمْ And he said that it appeared to me and came to me finally that there is no way to understand them without drinking the nectar of their teaching, without reaching the honey of their teaching. It's not only to follow the bee to the web, to the nest, but you need to take the honey from there. You don't need only to go the journey, but you need to taste what they are tasting. If you don't taste, you don't know anything about them. And this is mentioned in his book, Al Munkiz Min Al Dalal, page 56, 58, and 60. So he had hope. He wants hope. When he was, was only studying what he was studying before entering into Tasawwuf, his hope, the hope that he will reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he found it a long way to go. So he needs something to, uh, he, he found that there is a need, a vehicle, a mean, the means. And that was the means of learning from the people of Tasawwuf. The hope is to, con to, uh, to hope that you attach, that's a shawk, that's a, a raja, that's uh, the uh, level we are describing that, describing now, is that is ta'allukul qalb, is the connection, hope means, is the attachment, attachment of the heart bimahboobin, with a love, loved one. Means you attach your heart to love someone that will come to you in the future. That's your hope. That I am, <coughs> I am reciting, he is reciting Qasida on Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why he is reciting on Qasida? Hoping that one day Prophet's heart open to him and Prophet come and come say, come to me. You love me, I love you. So that is hope. So the, the, that state that you reach after, after uh, reaching, after the stages we have explained before, this is the, this is the fifth uh, state, is that to attach your heart with someone that you love, but you know that you have to work hard for that love in order to reach it in the future. <coughs> you don't have it now but you need it in the future. So if you don't have hope, you don't, you don't do, you, 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 you would not reaching that. You never reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divine presence if you don't have hope. If you have hope like some people they say today, and we know many of them around, they say, oh, don't bother yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, pray five prayers, is not? Safas, Ramadan, make zakat, doing hajj, and go to malls. That's it. You don't need to do more, more than that. Huh? That's it. I heard it in California, in Southern California, between big people that they consider them scholars today of, of Islam in America, or, and head of big organization. They asked them this question. He said, you don't need to do anything. Go, you make your five prayers. Give your charity, fast your Ramadan, if you make Hajj one time in, in your life, and go enjoy yourself in the malls. That's Islam. Okay? If that's Islam, that is okay. That you go to paradise. No problem. But under Allah's mercy and under Prophet Sallallahu Shafa'ah, don't think that you are going not to need them. You need them. Whatever you pray, if you pray all your life, don't think your prayer are going to be accepted mixed with all kind of... Uh, bad uh, gossips when you are praying and coming at the end and saying I'm going to go to paradise. No, you are not going to paradise without shafa'ah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa without praising Sayyidina Muhammad, without asking. You have to take him as intercessor. You have to take him as a means for you to go to paradise. And you are going to get Allah's uh, mercy because Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gave you shafa'ah, Allah will forgive you. Or else there is no forgiveness. Which goes for every Muslim. Alhamdulillah, with Allah's uh, blessings on us, that everyone. But if you want to go higher, 
then you have to have a state of hope. So that hope will make you to be so close, so close, we didn't say when we said in the future, so close to to be under Ar-Rahma Al-Uzma. You say Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater. Azim is what? Greatest. Greatest. Cannot be the same name. It's different mighty. names. Mighty. Grandeur, mighty, mighty. mighty. What Al Jabbar? Aziz is mighty. So Al Azim, Al Rahma Al Uzma, the 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 hugest, the undescribable, unlimited mercy. You will be. It might be a nano, a nano of it will be dressed to you, and that is our hope. Amen. And don't forget, who is Ar Rahm Al Muhdat, the gifted mercy to humanity, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His name is Ar Rahm Al Muhdat, one of his names, beautiful names of Prophet, the gifted mercy. The mercy that being gifted to humanity is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is under that huge rahmah. He is in the in the middle, in the essence that everyone has to take a take a small be part of it. That we are asking to be nano nano on it of of it to be under his feet uh, dust to act, he accept us. If he accept us above that we will be more happy. Wherever he raise us up, we will be more happier. And we say, Ya Rabbi, Allah, forgive us with the uh, shafa'ah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for dunya wal akhirah and cure us from every difficulties and sicknesses and give us long life to see Sayyidina Al-Mahdi Alayhi Salaam, Sayyidina Isa Alayhi Salaam, Hurmat Al-Fatiha. Yeah, I'm not going to go.